In this video, we're going to be talking about the approval method of voting. Approval voting is a method of voting where voters indicate their approval of each candidate. A ballot in an approval vote lists all the candidates and voters check off each candidate they approve of. The candidate with the most approval votes wins. Basically, this is a method of voting where you can vote for as many candidates as you want. If, say, there are five candidates running in an election and you would be happy if any two of those five candidates won, you can vote for those two and not vote for the three that you don't like. Now we'll get to some assumptions that we have to make about approval votes. Voters must approve of at least one choice on the ballot, but cannot approve of all choices. The reason for this is because if you approve of one or more choice, but not all of them, you're giving those choices an edge over other choices. If you approve of everybody, it's the same as not voting for anybody, because you're just leveling the playing field. You're not giving anybody an advantage over other candidates. So you have to vote in a way that gives one or more candidates an advantage. The second assumption is a voter will only approve of their highest ranked choices. For example, a voter may approve of their first choice, or first and second choice, or first, second, and third choice, but they can approve of their first and third choice without also approving of their second choice. So this would be for examples where a preference ranking table is included along with what candidates are approved of. Let's take a look at this example. Which flavor of bubble tea would win in the following election using an approval vote? So all of these check marks here are going to indicate whether or not a group of voters approves of a specific candidate. So we're going to treat these check marks as being the same thing as kind of like a one if we were doing a plurality vote. We see this check mark here. That means this one voter approves of the candidate tarot. So they end up with one vote. Now we'll go to strawberry and we see we have three voters here that approve of them. We have two voters that approve and one voter that approves. So those, this group of three, this group of two, this group of one, they all give their votes to strawberry. Now we have peach, the next candidate. This one voter also approved of peach. So taro and peach were the two flavors they liked. So that's who they decided to approve of. So they get one vote from them. And then if we go down here, we have one more voter that also approved of Peach, so they're voting for them. Now we'll go to Kiwi, the last candidate. We have two voters approve of them, and then one voter approves of them. So if we add everything up, we see Taro has one vote, Strawberry has six, Peach has two, Kiwi has three. So Strawberry ended up with the most votes, so they win using approval method. Now we're going to get into some examples that are a little bit more complex than the one we just saw. And this is something to keep in mind when doing these problems on your own. When determining which candidate will win if an approval vote is used, ignore preference rankings. Cross out the preference ranking numbers if you find yourself getting confused by them. This is something that happens to a lot of people when they're doing these types of problems. Only take into account the number of voters in each group of voters and which candidates each group of voters approves of. A way that you can kind of check your work here is to double check that the numbers you're adding up to get your tallies correspond to groups of voters, not preference rankings. Sometimes you can have a group of two or three voters and that will be the same number that shows up in a preference ranking, but you should still double check that all of the numbers you're adding up are coming from the specific groups of voters. A very common mistake is for people to add up preference rankings instead of number of voters. And we'll take a look at that in this example here. So here we have a table where we have voters preference rankings and we also have where their approval is indicated. So we'll go through this now. Given the preference ranking of 12 voters shown below, determine which candidate would win if the election is deciding using an approval vote and we're told approval is indicated with you know this check mark symbol here. So we'll start to count up how many votes everybody has. So first we'll look at Mario and we see, okay, there's a check mark here and we have five voters here. So this means five voters approve of this candidate, so they're giving him five votes. A common mistake a lot of people would make is they see this number one here and they only count it as one vote, or they only count it as one vote because they only see one check mark, but you need to always be looking at the number of voters there are. That's why I recommend doing this. Just getting rid of all of the preference ranking numbers so that you do not find yourself getting distracted by them and go through and circle the check marks when you're doing an approval vote. 
you know, maybe you want to cross this out with pencils so that you can erase it and use it if they ask you to determine the winner using other voting methods. But right now we're just doing an approval vote. We weren't asked to do anything else, so I'm, you know, we're free to cross all of these out. Anyway, nobody else approved of Mario, so that's it. Now we'll move on to our next candidate. And we see we have five people approved of Luigi, and then we had three people approved of Luigi. And that's it. Now we'll move on to our next candidate, Peach. We have five people approved of Peach, and that's it. And now we'll move on to Daisy. We had four people approve of Daisy, and then three people approve of Daisy. So we add all of these up. We get five, eight, five, and seven. So Luigi has the most approval votes, so he's the one that wins the approval election. Now we'll take a look at another example. Here's an example where we're given a voter preference ranking table. Uh, we also have approval indicated, and then they're asking us to determine who the winner would be if we used a whole bunch of different methods. So here we are going to need to know what these preference ranking numbers are for plurality, for the head-to-head, -head, and for Borda's method, but we're not going to need them for when we're doing our approval vote. So we'll, let's take a look at this. Suppose 10 people took a vote on which game is responsible for ending the most friendships. Approval is indicated with this checkmark symbol. Now they're asking us which game would win using. First we'll go through an approval vote, and then we'll look at the others, which are things we've all seen before. So for part A, we're doing an approval vote. And now what we would do here, because we're doing an approval vote, just cross out the preference ranking numbers so we don't end up confusing ourselves. And then we're going to see where all of the check marks are. So make sure we don't miss any when we're counting them up. So for Smash Brothers, we see that we have three voters here that approved, so they give them three votes. Then we have one voter here that approved, so they give them one vote. Then we have two voters here that approved, so they give them two votes, and that's it. Now we'll move on to Uno. We have one voter that approved, so they give them one vote. Then we have two voters that approved, so they give them two votes. Notice how we crossed out a number one over here. Sometimes it wouldn't be an uncommon mistake for somebody to write down a number one there instead of a number two because there's two voters. You get confused seeing the preference ranking number. So again, that's why I suggest crossing it out if you get confused by it. And that's it. Nobody else approves of Uno. Now we'll go to Mario Party. We have one person that approved of them, so they give them one vote. Notice there was a number two here that was crossed out. Sometimes we might make the mistake of writing down that two instead of the one voter. So again, always double check that you're writing down a number of voters, not whatever the preference ranking is. We move over, two voters that approve, so they give them two approval votes. Two voters that approve, they give them two approval votes. And one voter that approves, and they give them one approval vote. So now we add everything up, and we end up with 6, 3, and 6. So we have a tie between Smash Brothers and Mario Party for this. Now we'll move on to Part B, which is asking us to find the winner if we use the plurality election. Here we just care about who each group of voters' uh, first choice is. That's who they'll be voting for in plurality. And what I'd suggest doing here is, you know, pause the video, try and work parts B, C, and D out yourself because we've already done these types of problems. Then hit play when you're done and you can see me go through the rest of the solution. Counting up how many plurality votes we have. Uh, three people vote for them here. Then we have one person that votes for Smash. Then we have one and two people that vote for Uno. And then we have two and one people that vote for Mario Party. And that's it. So we have four, we have three, and we have three. So Smash Brothers wins using plurality. Then Part C was asking us to do a head-to-head -head comparison between Uno and Mario Party. So what we're going to do now is get rid of Smash Brothers as a candidate. Treat it like we would treat a runoff, except, you know, it's not the top two choices. In fact, we didn't have any top two choices, so think of this as kind of like a runoff for second place, except, you know, we were just told to do a head-to-head -head between these two candidates. So now we have to figure out how everybody's going to vote. We know how these last four columns are going to vote because their first choices are still in the election. 
the problem we have here is these three voters and this one voter, their first choices have been knocked out, so now they have to change who they're voting for. So these three voters will vote for their second choice because that's the more preferred choice they have that's still in the running. And then this one voter will vote for their second choice, again, because it's the more preferred choice that's there. So Uno has three votes, plus one vote, plus two votes, and that's it. And Mario Party has one vote, plus two votes, plus one vote, and we add this up to find our winner, and we end up getting six and four. So Uno would end up winning this head-to-head. -head. And again, if we wanted to check our work, we were told that there were ten voters. If we go back to the problem here, we were told there were ten voters, and we can check our work here. So four plus three plus three adds up to ten and 6 plus 4 also adds up to 10, so that means we're less likely to have made a mistake. Now we'll do part D, which was Borda's method. So again, what we do for Borda's method is take the number of voters we have, multiply it by their preference ranking. So for Smash Brothers, we have three voters times a preference ranking of 1, plus one voter times a preference ranking of 1, plus one voter times a preference ranking of 2, plus two voters times a preference ranking of three, plus two voters times a preference ranking of two, plus one voter times a preference ranking of two, and all of that adds up to 18. We'll go through it for the other two. Three voters, preference ranking of two, plus one voter times a preference ranking of three, plus one voter times a preference ranking of one, plus two voters times a preference ranking of one, plus two voters times a preference ranking of three, plus one voter times a preference ranking of three, and all of that ends up adding up to 21. And for the last one, three voters times a preference ranking of three, plus one voter times a preference ranking of two, plus one voter times a preference ranking of three, plus two voters times a preference ranking of two, plus two voters times a preference ranking of one, plus one voter times a preference ranking of one, and all of that adds up to 21. Now for Borda's method, the lowest score wins, so 18 is the lowest score we have here, so this is our Borda's method winner. Now let's take a look at this example. What I would recommend doing here, pause the video, try to solve this one yourself, then when you think you have the answer, or if you get stuck, you can hit play and see me go through the rest of the solution. So we want to solve this using an approval vote. We're not asked to do any other method, so the first thing I'd recommend doing is going and crossing out all of these preference rankings so we don't confuse ourselves. Then the next thing I'm going to do is circle all of the approval votes so we can keep track of where they are, and this makes it a little bit harder to miss them. Now we're going to count up how many approval votes each, ca each candidate has. So let's see, we have Carmela has two approval votes there, and that's it. Lenore has two approval votes here, three approval votes here, and one approval vote here, and that's it. Marana has three approval votes over here, and one approval vote over here. Striga has two approval votes here, three approval votes here, and three approval votes here. So we add everything up now to get our final tallies. So we have two, we have six, we have four, and we have eight. So eight is the highest number of approval votes, so we have our winner here. 